Hello, it is mid-February, which means we are getting into the full swing of book prize season, or at least this is the time of year when a lot of book prizes are publishing their long lists, and I always get really excited about this because often these uh, prize lists point me towards books that I've uh, not come across before or that uh, I just haven't got a chance to read yet and so are encouraging me to, to finally get to some of these books. Or in the case of this prize, some books which I might have started reading but then put aside. Uh, so uh, this, the Republic of Consciousness Prize recently published their long list of 10 books and this is an award specifically for small presses and they define that as any publisher that has uh, five full-time employees or less um, that, that work for them and uh, which is quite interesting because if you didn't know that uh, it's quite a big uh, commitment for publishers to put books forward for awards. Um, usually this like demands a lot of their their resources. There's um, usually a financial commitment like in a time commitment and yeah and of their resources in, in general. Um, so you know and this is obviously because they're a small publisher with not many employees and um, they might not have the ability to put books forward for awards for this. So I think it's really great that this award you know highlights um, this issue and uh, small publishers that are are quite often publishing some of the most interesting things around. You know, they they quite often put out books um, that larger publishers aren't um, willing to take on because maybe they don't think they have the commercial prospects that some other books are that have. And uh, so, um, quite often these books, you know, how do be doing something innovative um, with their narrative structure or their their style or language or be representing a, a point of view or a voice you know which isn't often represented in in mainstream fiction so um, so yeah I think this is a, a really exciting and wonderful award and they've picked ten books um, six are novels um, four are collections of short stories because they don't have any limitations on what kind of narrative um, is put forward for the award and uh, yeah and, and a really interesting and dynamic group of, of books and like I said I've uh, I've well I've, I've only read one of these books in total and then three other books I started reading but put aside and I and I think you know because of this whole issue of like innovative um, structure of, of books I think quite often it requires more concentration and effort you know at least like initially um, to, to read the book um, because you know there's quite often this discussions around like readability and and what that that means and uh, and yeah and so for books that really push out like the form of what a book is um, it can be initially quite a disorientating experience and and I often find like if I'm not in quite the right mood for it and some of these books I'd started reading around like November or December um, when I was just like really busy and so you know I think I just didn't quite have the, the, the mental capacity or, or time at the that um, at the moment when I was reading it uh, to really get into the book but uh, but yeah I'll, I'll talk about that more as I'm um, discussing these books I also want to add that a lot of these books I'm um, just coincidentally are quite short so you know in terms of time commitment I think that like the uh, not much will be required I think the longest book on the list is 310 pages long and a lot of the books are considerably shorter than that so uh, so yeah they're, they're, they'll be quite um, uh, quick reading experiences and uh, so first off there is a book um, published by and other stories which is a great publisher that I've followed for many years and they've published a uh, lots of um, really exciting and interesting books and uh, this novel is somebody loves you uh, by Mona Arshi and this is the story of a girl named Ruby um, who learns at an early age uh, to withhold what she wants to say. Um, she, she goes silent and uh, because her, her mother is quite a difficult person to, to deal with and she has a lot of family issues and struggles and uh, so yeah so she just goes silent and she carries on this way um, throughout a lot of her life and I think she finds a 
particular kind of solace in this silence and uh, and I think it's really interesting to see the perspective of someone that is you know consciously withholding their narrative and their story um, from the the people around them and so yeah it's it's telling the the story of her life and this is a novel I've been really wanting to get to. Next is a novel published by Dar Arab Press and it's called Five Days Untold uh, by Badr Ahmed um, who is an author from Yemen and it's translated by Christian James and this is a novel set in uh, at the, the very end of 2012 and follows the course of five days during a civil war when a soldier is um, fighting the civil war but uh, doesn't want to be a part of this and, and is longing um, for a much more peaceful existence. So it's very much following his perspective. And um, it's, it's not named um, the country or the place where this civil war is taking place, um, but it's just yeah very much rooted in his perspective of, of this war. And yeah, I hadn't heard of um, this novel uh, before, but, um, but yeah, it sounds really interesting. From Daunt Books, there is Our Lady of the Nile by Shulastik Mukasanga, and this is translated uh, by Melanie Mothner. And this novel is set in Rwanda, um, I think at the end of the 1970s or the early 1980s, at a Catholic girls' school, and um, how uh, girls from the local community go to this um, school run by nuns who are sort of imposing their Western and religious ideas upon these girls, and uh, and but um, but how uh, but following the stories of of these girls and their different personalities and the uh, different local issues um, that, that they deal with and how they're sort of integrating or not um, with the, the ideals of these nuns and how these uh, sort of colonialist ideas are being like imposed uh, upon them. And uh, yeah, this, this novel sounds really interesting and, and I had started reading it and was really enjoying it um, from the beginning. But then I think there were just like so many characters that I just found it a bit disorientating and and uh, and so yeah I just sort of set it aside for the time being and meant to go back to it but um, but didn't ever finish reading it but um, but the story does sound really good and uh, yeah and this is a book that I've really been meaning to go back to. From Epoch Press there is The Beasts They Turned Away by Ryan Dennis and this is a novel about a old farmer um, who uh, takes in a boy that is mute um, that the local community has rejected and, and thinks there's a, a curse upon him. And so it's about his commitment um, to raising and caring for this boy um, that others have rejected and also maintaining um, his farm, uh, which is experiencing a lot of difficulties. And um, so it's about um, him sort of versus his local community, but how larger issues in the world are sort of impacting this community and causing this this tension um, amongst this this local community and uh, and yeah and I've um, really been wanting to read this 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 novel it's another novel that I keep meaning to get to and just haven't read yet from Fitzcarraldo editions there's the short story collection Dark Neighborhood by Vanessa Onwamezi and this is a collection of stories which I think are quite surrealist in tone and uh, yeah. And, and, uh, and really pushes the the form of what the short story can can do and are often located in these uh, quite ambiguous places but are about characters um, that are experiencing different forms of alienation loss and shame and uh, and I started reading the very first um, story in this collection and just felt completely disorientated and um, didn't really understand what what was going on and and um, but I've heard so many great things about this collection that I do really want to give it another try and you know at a time when I think I'll have you know the the time and concentration that I think these stories deserve. From Film de Estampa Press there is the short story collection The Son of Youth by Montserrat Roig and it's translated from the Catalan uh, by Tiago Miller and uh, this is a short story collection about a number of 
of individuals that are finally able to speak up for themselves and tell their stories, um, which they weren't able to do under the repressive uh, Franco regime. And Montserrat Roig was an author that died uh, a number of years ago, but her work has finally been translated and published in English um, by this publisher, um, who bring out these really beautiful editions of these books. Um, their, their books always have um, these like lovely abstract designs, and I just love the um, sim simplicity and style of um, the, the books that they publish. From Lolly Editions, there's the short story collection After the Sun by Jonas Eka, um, who's an author from Denmark, and this is a collection um, translated by Sherilyn Nicolette Helberg. And these stories, um, I think, are also quite surreal and strange in tone, um, although he kind of pairs that with um, some sections are, are more in a hyper-realistic um, form. And it's yeah, describing different kinds of modern day experience. And uh, this is another short story collection, which I began, but also felt like totally lost when, when I started it. And uh, so I, yeah, I think these are stories are probably quite like challenging to read. Um, the only other booktuber I know that has actually read this is Matthew Sharapa and and he he described this as, as sort of like interesting but um, but but yeah quite uh, quite a difficult collection one that you know he definitely wouldn't recommend to, to everyone. Um, so yeah I, I do want to give these another try especially because, because uh, these stories come with so much praise from uh, a lot of like really interesting authors you know whose opinions I trust but um, but but yeah, I'm quite, I, I'm quite trepidatious. From Peninsula Press, there is Sterling Carrot Gold by Isabel Wadner, and this is a novel which also won the Goldsmiths Prize for Fiction um, at the end of last year, um, which is another really exciting uh, book award. And this, this novel is so wild. How do I describe it? Um, so, so this novel I have read, and uh, and I really enjoyed. I think is so like fascinating, and it's just such an explosively imaginative experience. Um, it's about an individual that at the beginning of the novel gets caught up in a, in a bullfight um, in the north of London and then goes on this sort of Kafka-esque trial um, where they're persecuted and they're um, drawn to um, try to defend themselves but in doing so tries to gather evidence and, um, and form a trial through this artistic project um, which takes them across time and space um, by using a space ship. Um, so yeah, so quite a wild novel, difficult to describe, but also how this um, this this narrator and character um, explores their uh, difficult relationship they had with their father, who was a famous footballer that was also closeted and had a number of gay affairs and um, and died of, of died of um, AIDS uh, related illness. And uh, so describing um, yeah that that uh, character's experience, um, but but for all like the wildness of the the narrative, there's like a real warmth and tenderness to this story, like especially in the the characters' friendships and relationships um, that they. They have and also their commitment to um, their artistic process and I just I just found this novel like so wonderful and and such like a joyous experience to read. From Taras Press which I believe is an Irish publisher is uh, the novel In the Dark by Anna Maria Crow Serrano and this is a book I had not come across um, before and is a story um, coincidentally also um, set during the the time of uh, Franco like Montserrat Roig's um, novel but um, but in a time much previous than than what that is set. I think it's set during 1937 and is a in, set in a house um, which is housing a number of people um, some of whom are like political dissidents and um, who are hiding from um, during the the course of the Spanish um, Civil War um, so yeah following that that time period and a number of different individuals in this concentrated in this particular house and so yeah sounds really good and finally from Tilted Access Press there is the short story collection Happy Stories Mostly uh, by Norman Erickson Pasarabu, um, who's an author from Indonesia and this is translated by Tiffany Sao and uh, so this is a uh, 
collection in a book that um, I just happened to buy a few weeks ago when I was off on a ramble um, going to some different bookstores. And in fact, I still have my, my receipt from Foils um, in it. And yeah, I just think it sounds so good. Um, a lot of the stories have include characters um, who are queer and it places them in narratives that are often like dominated by heterosexual characters. So it um, says that it's kind of queering the narrative and also draws upon different uh, Christian, Christian and uh, Indonesian um, cultural um, ideas um, to, to tell these stories. And uh, it says that a lot of these stories, um, there'll be some characters that cross over between them or um, different stories will uh, cover like the same themes from different angles. And this, these are the kinds of short story collections that I really love and I think are so exciting when you get all these different pieces um, throughout a number of different stories which form a larger picture. So it's like sort of putting together a puzzle and, and I find that really exciting and interesting in, in fiction. So those are the 10 books on the list. Like I said, a lot of these books, um, yeah, to have include these like innovative like forms of, of writing which I think will demand some more time and attention than than we um, often you know give to, to books or, or willing to allow to for books and you know like I said a few of these books I had started but but put aside and uh, but I, I think uh, the the prize is saying you know that's really worth your time and attention to to, to read these books and you know and, and it's a it's an issue that I always struggle with because you know there are some books that I just personally happen not to enjoy um, all that much and so I think it's totally fine to you know put them aside and and not read them but then there are other books which um, do require a lot of time and attention and initially I might be put off from but once I you know put in that that commitment to them and read them um, can be some of the most exciting fiction that I've ever read. And I've had that uh, with a number of books I I've read in the past, you know, when I've really dedicated myself to reading it, it's been so richly rewarding. In fact, my favorite novel of all time is Virginia Woolf's The Wave, which does use a very different form of, of language and structure and style um, to it, um, which at first it was a bit alienating, but it's gone on to be my favorite novel of all time and I've reread it countless times and um, so yeah I'm hoping to find that with some of these new books but if you read any of them I'd love to know your thoughts about them or if you're interested in reading them now um, please let me know about that in the comments below um, or if you have any other book awards that you're really looking forward to I'd love to, to hear about that as well but I hope you're reading good things and I will speak to you again soon bye bye